Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at centripetal force, factors affecting centripetal force, finding the centripetal force example, and then we'll finish with a summary. We're firstly going to define what the centripetal force is. We have seen that an object in circular motion is always accelerating towards the centre of its circular path. So this object in circular motion has a certain velocity v and an angular velocity omega. The angular velocity is constant, but the instantaneous velocity is constantly changing direction. And so this object is going to experience a centripetal acceleration towards the centre of its path. Newton's second law states that all accelerating objects require a net or resultant force. Newton's second law states that force F is equal to mass of an object M times acceleration A. So therefore, this person on a bicycle, if they're accelerating, there must be a resultant force on them because of Newton's second law. We define the force that keeps an object moving at a constant speed along a circular path as the centripetal force. So this acceleration is due to a centripetal force. The centripetal force acts in the same direction as the centripetal acceleration, which is towards the centre of the circle. So the centripetal force is in exactly the same direction as the acceleration. Let's recall the formulae for centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration A is equal to instantaneous velocity squared divided by radius R, and centripetal acceleration is also equal to angular velocity squared times radius r. Using Newton's second law of motion, we can find an equation for centripetal force. Newton's second law states that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So in order to find the centripetal force from the centripetal acceleration, all we need to do is multiply the centripetal acceleration by mass, and we get the following formulae. Firstly, that centripetal force is equal to m mass times instantaneous velocity squared divided by r and force is also equal to the mass of the object times the radius of the circular motion times the angular velocity squared. Let's do an example. Calculate the centripetal force on an object of mass 1.2 kilograms rotating in a circle of radius 0.2 meters if its angular velocity is 12 radians per second. So here's our object rotating in a circle of radius 0.2 meters, which has a mass of 1.2 kilograms, and we know that its angular velocity omega is equal to 12 radians per second. Step one is to write down the formula for centripetal force using angular velocity. In order to calculate centripetal force from the information we've been given, we need to multiply mass by radius by angular velocity squared. Step two is to substitute in values to find the centripetal force. So the centripetal force is equal to the mass of the object, 1.2 kilograms, times the radius, 0.2 meters, times the angular velocity, which is 12 radians per second squared. And if we put all these numbers into our calculator, we find that the centripetal force is equal to 34.56, which is equal to 35 newtons to two significant figures. The centripetal force is always perpendicular to the velocity of the object. We know the instantaneous velocity is always tangential to the circle because it's perpendicular to the radius. And this means that it's also perpendicular to the centripetal force F, which always acts towards the center of the circle. This means that no work is done by the centripetal force. So when an object moves around a circle from A to B in uniform circular motion, no work is done on it by the centripetal force. And this means that the speed of the object remains constant. So the speed of the object at A is the same as the speed of the object at B. Remember that speed is the magnitude of velocity. Now we're going to look at some factors that affect centripetal force. Let's recall the equations for centripetal force. Centripetal force F is equal to mass M times instantaneous velocity squared divided by radius. Centripetal force is also equal to mass times radius times angular velocity squared. We can clearly see from these equations that the resultant centripetal force on an object in circular motion will be larger if the object rotates faster. So if we have two objects in a circle with the same radius, the same mass, but one of them has a larger angular velocity, aka it rotates faster, and omega 2 is greater than omega 1, then the centripetal force, F2, is going to be greater than F1. So one way of expressing that an object rotates faster is by increasing 
its angular velocity, but we can also increase its linear velocity. If v2 is greater than v1, then f2 is going to be greater than f1. The centripetal force will also increase if the rotating object has more mass. So in this case, if the two objects have the same velocity and the same angular velocity, but one of them has a greater mass, the force on the larger mass is going to be greater than the force on the smaller mass. We can also increase the centripetal force if the object is further from the centre of the circle. So again, these two objects are going to have the same velocity and the same angular velocity, but they're going to be travelling in different circles, one of them with a the radius r1 and one of them with a the greater radius r2. And this means that f2 is going to be greater than f1. We're now going to do an example of finding the centripetal force. We can use the equations for the centripetal force to determine balancing forces in real life scenarios involving circular motion. So for example, a satellite will move around the Earth under circular motion, and the satellite is going to experience a centripetal force towards the Earth. For example, a satellite orbits the Earth at an orbital radius of 6,800 kilometers, with an orbital period of 90 minutes. If the mass of the satellite is 2,000 kilograms, find the gravitational force exerted on the satellite by the Earth. Step one is to draw a diagram identifying the gravitational force on the satellite as the centripetal force. So we draw the Earth in the centre and the satellite orbiting around it. We can draw on the radius of orbit of the satellite and the centripetal force, which arises from the gravitational force between the Earth and the satellite. Step two. Write down the formula for centripetal force in terms of the angular velocity. Centripetal force F is equal to mass m times radius r times angular velocity squared. Step 3 is to write down an equation for angular velocity using the time period. Angular velocity is equal to 2 pi divided by the time period. Step 4 is to substitute in the equation for angular velocity into the formula for centripetal force. So centripetal force is equal to mass times radius r times this expression for omega all squared, which is 2 pi divided by t all squared. Step 5 is to find the time period and the radius of the orbit in SI units. So the time period, we're told, is equal to 90 minutes, which is 90 times 60 seconds, which is 5,400 seconds. The radius is equal to 6,800 kilometers which is 6,800 times 10 to the 3 metres, or 6.8 times 10 to the 6 metres. Step 6 is to substitute in values to find the centripetal force. So the centripetal force is equal to mass, which is 2,000 kilograms, times radius, which is 6.8 times 10 to the 6 metres, times 2 pi divided by t, all squared, which is 2 pi divided by 5,400 seconds, all squared. And therefore we find the centripetal force is equal to 18,000 newtons to two significant figures. And we can now write down the gravitational force exerted on the satellite by the Earth. The gravitational force is equal to the centripetal force, which is equal to 18,000 newtons. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap or buy smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.